Hello, welcome to live.thecode.uk. I'm Mr. Dring from Fulford School, and I'm really excited to launch season two of live.thecode.uk. The first season started right at the beginning of the first COVID lockdown to give students some regular practice and experience to build up confidence in Python code. Um, and season two goes back to basics. So it's designed for students who are just starting out um, a new GCSE in computer science or students who want to recap um, to build up your confidence in the basics. Um, so the way that live.withcode.uk works, there's links in the description if you're watching on YouTube to four activities, or you can find those links on um, the website live.withcode.uk, or if your school signed up for the free competitions, um, then you can get these weekly added to your compete.withcode.uk site, and your teacher can track your um, progress, and you can compete against your, um, your classmates as well. Uh, so let's get started with this week's challenge. Um, the basics thing that we're focusing on today is output. So how do we display stuff from Python code in our programs? We'll end up with a, a face like this. We'll have some code that displays it in Python. Um, and this is uh, it's supposed to be live coding. So as well as seeing the end result, we want to start from a blank canvas um, and see the code come together and all the thought processes behind it. So one of the first things that you'll do in any um, program is to display a message. And whenever you put inside these quote marks is going to be displayed in your console, the text window in Python. You can use single quotes or double quotes, but they have to match. If they don't match, you get a syntax error, which prevents your code from running. Um, so if we want to display a face, so let's think of some ASCII art, something like this, and using some forward slashes and some backslashes. That's a pipe character. I'm going to go for an I um, and another I in here. Maybe extend that a little bit more. And then let's go for a nose with some quotation marks. Um, maybe that will just stay still. Uh, and then a little face. Some forward slashes and underscores and backslashes. Um, and how can we end this? Maybe with some underscores, something like that. So, if I want to display that, Python doesn't know what any of this is. It's thinking it's Python commands. So, we have to wrap it all in our print statements um, and quotation marks. So, let's copy all of, oops, let's copy all of that, put that at the beginning. That, so we're printing each of these lines. We have to make sure that there's a quotation mark at the end and brackets at the end. Those have to balance on all of them. But we're still going to have some problems here. It says bad token on line one. So what's going on here? Well, some of these characters are special characters. This backslash um, is sometimes used. Um, well, first of all, let's explain here. Like This text is supposed to be displayed. Um, starting with a quote mark and ending with a quote mark, but it's got a quote mark in the middle. So because we want to display literally that double quotation mark, we put a backslash in front of it, um, which shows you that you can have like special characters if they're escaped with a backslash. And if we want a, a literal actual backslash, we need a double backslash in there. Okay, um, so that's looking better. So the idea here, um, I'll put some challenges up on here. Um, You've got a link to this code. Your first challenge is to change the face to be sad instead of happy. You can maybe um, put the slashes on a different line, um, change the facial expressions. You can make the hair spiky. So put in your, um, I don't know, whatever hairstyle you want in ASCII characters. ASCII is just um, text to, to draw an image. And maybe draw some neck and shoulders. The crucial thing here is that if you want to display something in Python, you have to use print and then brackets and then either single quotes or double quotes and make sure that whatever type of quote you start with, you finish with the same and you balance your brackets as in if you open a bracket, you have to close a bracket. OK, so all of the links to these activities will be on live.wcode.uk. Um, there is the type race activities. So even if you don't understand the code, you can boost your confidence and your speed by typing out the code that you've just seen in that live coding video. Um, this will take you to the link to the code that you've just seen. The K-Pride activities. 
um, is to boost your code comprehension. So if you can recognize the keywords, the key concepts within that code, and to give you some practice in debugging. Um, and then there's a link to a, um, a series of tutorials that you can work through. Um, so you can work through some output tutorials at your own pace, and you'll get loads of points if you work through these if you're on the compete.withcode.uk challenges. Um, so I'll show you how to get started. For example, there's some try it activities, some debug activities, and some extend it activities. So try it means you've got some code that works already. You just need to tweak it ever so slightly um, to be able to get your points. Let's have a look and see. Um, so here, our challenge says change line three to say hello instead of hi. So if we change that to hello instead of hi, um, you should get um, some points here. And if you're on compete.withcode.uk, that will appear on your scoreboard. The teachers can track your scores um, and you can get points to compete against each other. Um, you can also print off a PDF to monitor your progress and hand this into your teacher um, or just for your own um, records as you work through. All right. So I hope that um, uh, I hope that you can join us for this journey. We've got about 20 activities throughout this academic year, um, starting from the very basics. Next week is going to be about input to build on what we've done with output this week. All the very best. See you next week. Bye bye.